A second asylum seeker has been flown to a Brisbane hospital after setting herself on fire on Nauru. The federal government has accused refugee advocates of encouraging self-harm. For the second time in a week, a refugee suffering significant burns arrives in Brisbane, medevaced from Nauru. In this ambulance, Somalian woman Hodan Yasin, who set herself alight on Monday. She'd only returned to Nauru last week, following time in Australia for other medical treatment. It seems that she was sent back before uh, it, the doctors were happy for her to be relieved, uh, to be sent back, and we know that uh, she was um, on suicide watch. On Friday, 23-year-old Iranian refugee Omid Masumali died in Brisbane. He'd also set himself on fire days earlier in front of United Nations representatives visiting Nauru. I've previously expressed my frustration and anger, frankly, at advocates and others who are in contact with those in regional processing centres and who are encouraging some of these people to behave in a certain way. The government today forced to defend its border policy again. And far from living in the hellhole advocates would have you believe, Refugees on Nauru are free from a fear of persecution and many are building new lives. The policy is designed to pay, break people's spirits. It doesn't have to be a choice between dangerous boat journeys or people burning themselves to death. As politicians address concerns about Nauru, residents on Cocos Islands have reported the first asylum seeker boat to arrive in almost two years. Locals telling the ABC the vessel was spotted on Monday and met by Border Force officials. But the government remains confident its policy is working and is closing more detention centres. We will close 17 detention centres, resulting in 17 detention centres having been opened by Labor and 17 closed by this government. A self-proclaimed win ahead of an election campaign. Live to Andrew Koss at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. Andrew, what's the latest on the woman's condition? Jess, unfortunately for Hodan Yasin, the outlook is grim. She remains in a critical condition and despite the best efforts of doctors here, I'm told there's little chance she'll survive. Now, the federal government is adamant it's doing enough to prevent this sort of incident from happening. Today, uh, Peter Dutton said that it's strengthening its medical contingent on Nauru from 52. It sent an additional eight staff last week, including four mental health practitioners. And it will be sending a further contingent later this week. Jess? Andrew Koss reporting.